When I was learning about circuits for the first time, I had a big confusion. I used to think that since resistance resists or obstructs the flow of charges, when there should be, if, if the current was flowing in this direction, there should be high current over here, and by the time it comes out, there should be low current over here. And let me, let me tell you my logic. I had a logic behind this. Let me tell you what I mean. So electrons are flow of charges, right? So now imagine electrons are flowing this way, okay? Don't worry about the negative sign, the, the direction of the current and all of that. Just imagine the electrons are flowing this way. And how do the electrons flow? Well, th there is a battery that's giving it a kick. So let's say the battery kicks the electron over here. My logic was this. See, over here there is no obstruction so that electron will go very fast over here. And then there comes resistance. It obstructs the flow and therefore it slows down. And then by the time it comes here, it should become slower, right? And so it should be slow and therefore there should be low current over here. Makes sense, right? <laughs> there is logic in it. So my logic told me there should be high current over here, high current over here if the current is in this direction. And I know that the conventional direction of the current is in the opposite direction of the flow of charges, but let's not worry about all of that. Um, if the current is in this direction, I thought there should be high current over here and there should be low current over here. One side should have high current, the other side should have low current. And I also had another model to help me help me grasp this because when you're learning things for the first time about circuits, you can't imagine circuits. So one of the models that I used, my teacher had helped me model it, was by thinking of it as a road and thinking of resistors as obstructions in the road. So we can imagine that there is a car. Where's the car? Okay, here's the car. So let's say there's a car. And let's say we give a kick to this car. Imagine this is a toy car, it doesn't have an engine, let's say. You give a kick to this car over here and then something very similar would happen, right? So if there is no obstruction, very smooth highway, the car would go very quickly over here, very fast. And then there is an obstruction. This is where the car would slow down. Remember, there are no engines in the car. It would slow down and if it doesn't stop already, it would come out very slowly from this side. So it kind of makes sense. This makes sense. So one side should have high current, the other side should have low current. The charges should slow down. But guess what? That's wrong. It turns out that's not true. It turns out when you learn about these circuits, you, you learn that in this circuit, if you take a very simple circuit, there are no branches and everything, then the current is the same everywhere. We get the same current. And my question was, why? Or how does that make any sense? Well, it took me a while, but then I realized the biggest mistake we are making over here is we are assuming there's only one electron in this entire circuit. There, and that's wrong. There are electrons everywhere. How does that help us? Well, let's come back over here. Instead of imagining there's one car, which is wrong, we have to imagine there are cars everywhere. So there are cars everywhere. Imagine there is no space for them to go. It's like completely jam-packed. Now think about this. Although the cars over here are going super slow because of all the obstruction, the car behind it can't go any faster. The car behind that can't go any faster because there is no room for it to go any faster. Similarly, the car over here, yes, there is no obstruction, but hey, it, there's no room for it to go any faster. And therefore, all the cars have to go at the same exact same speed. Does that make sense? Because the same thing is happening over here. There isn't one electron, there are, mo there are lots of electrons everywhere. And if the electrons are sl going slower here, then that means the electron must be slower everywhere because the electrons over here can't go any faster than the electrons over here. There's no space for them to go any faster. And therefore, everywhere electrons are going at the same speed, and therefore, there has to be the same current. And so the important thing is even though this obstruction is only in one part of the circuit, it's slowing down the current everywhere. But the current has to have the same value going in and coming out. Does that make sense now? Okay, what if we were to increase this resistance? Let's say I added a much more, you know, much more resistance to it. What's gonna happen now? Well, now, Again, the electrons over here are gonna become even slower. But the electrons here can't go any faster, so even the electrons here slow down. Even the electrons here slow down. And so everywhere the current becomes smaller. So you see, 
as you increase the resistance, this, therefore the current will become smaller, but it becomes smaller everywhere over here. But the current in, 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 uh, going into the resistance and going out has to be the same. The same logic applies over here. Hopefully no more confusions around this point.